Hello, hello. Ada, good evening. Good yes, evening. Yes, good evening. Juan Carlos, hello, how are you? Here, <laughs> ending my shift currently. <laughs> and you? Well, you know, here, ready to start as usual. <laughs> so you just finished your shift? Yes, at 8 p.m. Whoopsie. You must be tired. What time did you start working today? I started at... Um, 10 a.m. From 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Yes. <laughs> wow, that's a lot. Yes. Uh, to be honest, I, I, I'm not sure if I made the good uh, decision in add a part of this course, another of Excel on Saturdays uh, for from 7 a.m. to 12 a.m. <laughs> 12 p.m. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> but so far, I'm doing good, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> okay. That's nice. That's nice. But gee, it's a lot of work. Yes. It's not easy, and, and as you said, uh, having a another another class is difficult. I understand you totally. I'm in the same situation, but you know, uh, it's always good to learn something. Yeah, that's uh, that's so important. To be honest, I would like to uh, restart my uh, studies on the university but uh, by doing this or taking these courses it's like uh, I'm not sure if I'm ready to take uh, around of four classes and get a good, a good uh, score um, yeah it's difficult it's difficult believe me Right now I'm in the same situation. I'm studying at the university. Actually, a few minutes ago, my class finished. And not that easy, but it's possible. Yes, I'm seeing, I have seen a lot of people uh, reach, uh, finishing their goals and on that way. Yeah, as I tell you, it's not easy, but mm -hmm. with a little bit of an effort, you can do it. Oh, teacher, I have a question, by the way. Yeah, sure. Tell me. And when I'm joining to this session, I don't know why I have to set the number of the meeting and the password. Is there a way to leave that set up on this application? Like, automatically, automatically uh, join to this session without set the password and the meeting? Mm, to be honest with you, uh, no idea. I can find out for you because, I mean, in my case, uh, uh, it's oh, yes. different. Uh -huh. yes. mm -hmm. But I've never been in that situation. Yes, maybe I will try to ask to some mate, teammate here. Yeah, we will find out for you. Don't worry, don't worry. Thank you. Well, Juan Carlos, welcome to the class. Nice having you here. Thank you. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Beatriz, hello, good evening. Let's see, let's see. Okay, yeah. This is not available yet. Let's see, Jose Wilfredo, good evening, how are you? It was a really relaxing day, so I was like 
almost uh, more than six hours of training today because we are learning uh, another different uh, kind of May 1 report. And was with someone from the Hindi. So it was really relaxing because then I had other training, so I didn't I didn't cook my lunch, but I leave early. At 3 p.m. I was out. 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Okay, so it was cool for you. Yeah, for you. It was excellent for you. Because I have I could rest like two hours because then I have to drop the the micro bus. But that's really good. Yeah, but I mean a couple of hours of resting is is always good, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. It gives you the chance to 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 recharge your batteries, as we say. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But for the rest, everything goes. And the weekend is pretty close, right? Uh, what? The weekend is pretty close. That's. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then tomorrow I will leave at 2 p.m. Oh, really? So, yeah. I just have to work. But uh, I have to connect since 6 a.m. From 6 to what time? Yeah. Uh, 6 From to... to 2. Yeah, to 2. So that's going to be fine. Okay, well, yeah, as you say, it's going to be a good day. That's nice. Yeah, it's really good day. And then we can relax, unwind a little bit, rest. That's nice. Yeah, excellent. More than excellent, I guess. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. Yeah. But then, that's it. Okay, guys, hey, does anybody got the link who can send it to, uh, uh, oh, hold on, I guess I can do it. Mm -hmm. I can do it, I will send it to Steven, he wants it, he needs it. There it is. Okay, well, thank you very much, Jose Wilfredo. It's always nice talking to you. Appreciate it. And no, no, a pleasure. Let's see who else is here. Ileana, hello, how are you? Hello, teacher, good evening. Good evening, how are you? Fine, very fine. And you? Really? Well, yeah. you know, me, same old story. And <laughs> it's hot. Today is hot. Here is raining. It started raining really? a few minutes ago. Yeah. Where do you live? San Salvador, San, San, Santa Tecla. Santa Tecla. Yeah. Hey, you. I'm in the other side. I mean, I'm in San Martin, so I'm closer to to Cusco mm. Clan. Yeah. Other than. So here it's hot. I'm sweating. Mm. So sorry for you. Yeah, I don't like that. Now the problem is that when it gets like that at night, sometimes I get a headache. Mm. You and need a no. pizza puru like me. <laughs> yeah, you know, the problem is that my son says when, when we rub something like that, he says that it smells like old people. <laughs> no. <laughs> My son goes like, well, you're a hippo, so. I don't know why, I don't know why. So tell me, how was your day? What's, 
How's me? Mm, it's been great. Well, in the morning, uh, we were making some recordings with my boss and some people of human resources. Well, my boss was making the videos. I just helped with the speech and kind of the, the um, I don't know, maybe the creativity of the videos, stuff like that. Uh, these recordings are for Mother's Day. So uh, human resources told, told us that he need to 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 do this this these recordings. So we were making this in the in the morning. Then after that, uh, we were uh, we went to a meeting in Santa Elena. Mm, then had lunch. My house. Uh, my mom cooks something very delicious for me. Um, and after that, I came back, came back to the office and, you know, paperwork. Really? Yep. Uh, it's been a, a great day. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Yep. That's nice. It's always good when you can get reach the end of the day and say, it's been a great day today. Yeah. Like it, you know. I like it. I don't like you. My day was not like that. <laughs> no, it wasn't, <laughs> wasn't like that. No, actually, I had a, a little bit of a slow day. Let's see. You went to the gym today? Oh, yeah, sure. But... Uh, it was a heavy day at the gym. The routine? Because, yeah, it was a long one. It took me an hour and 40 minutes. Oh, yeah. It was a long one, but uh, the problem is this, that uh, we are going to start increasing weight, so it takes longer. Yeah. But it was fine. It's pretty fine. And it's good. It helps me to, to relax and to sleep at night. Yeah. I mean, even like that, I'm not sleeping that much, like four or five hours stops. But you sleep, yeah. you go to the bed too late, teacher. Yeah. I mean, the problem is if I start reading or like perhaps... Night. <laughs> yeah, if I start reading at night, man, I don't feel like sleeping. And sometimes, like this coming week, I'm gonna be sleeping even less because I got uh, new terms at the university next weekend. Not this one, the following one. And I need to read a lot. I need to study. I need to study a lot of theory. I need to make a lot of exercises from statistics. I need to read two books. One of them is Platon. So. It's gonna be oh, a cool one. Statistics. <laughs> yeah, I hate that. That thing is not <laughs> it's gonna <for> be me. <laughs> interesting. It's gonna be hell. I don't like it. But you know. <laughs> oh, like you said, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and the problem is that uh, I haven't paid enough attention, so I need to. Look for look up for the topics and review them. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Statistics is not my thing, but you know, we have to make part of the game. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It is. I don't know why I got that idea in my head of going back to study at this time of my life, but you know, what can we do? As you said, yeah. it's part of the game. Eliana, always a pleasure. Thank you and welcome. Thank you, teacher. Okay, let's see. Who else? Danny. Hello, Danny. How are you? Hello. I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, a little tired, maybe. Really? Why? <laughs> Long day at work? Yeah, I I left the work late and 
And then I went to buy a present for my mom and all the mall are very busy. Um, I don't know, I hate the places like that with too many people. <laughs> oh, yeah. I understand, yeah. yeah. You know, that's why I don't I don't go to the mall in December. That's what, in, the, in the last week of December, you won't get me into a mall. Yeah, the, the, it, it is very hard to find a, a parking space. Well, you know, my problem is with the crowds. I don't like oh, yeah. crowds. I mean, it gets me anxious. Me neither. One, of, one of the few things that really, really stress me out are crowds. You know, to be honest with you, there's not too many things that stress me out. <laughs> I mean, I try to take everything on, on a stride, not to get stressed. Uh, the other day I was, I was talking with some friends. Uh, I, we were in a in a traffic jam, I mean, I've been in traffic jams three, four hours. Me driving doesn't stress me out. I mean, I'm like, whatever, no problem. But getting into a mall with a lot of people, with crowds, man, that thing is, gets me anxious. Yeah, I don't know if this happened to you, that, that you are walking in the mall and I walk very fast. I don't like to walk slow. Oh, yeah. So the people always walk slowly. <laughs> and then you are here trying to pass them. I don't know. Oh. Pass, pass through them. Um, Tell me, Danny, are you married? No, no. That's why. <laughs> we will talk after you get married. And you go with your spouse uh, to the mall. You will learn how to walk slow. Believe me. Yeah. <laughs> yes, because that's a whole different story. Uh, I think you go chop by chop. Stop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you get used to it, you know. Uh, once my son and me, I remember uh, there was my wife, my sister-in-law, and my mother-in-law looking for dresses. So my son and me looked for a spot. Uh, we were at, uh, let's see, what is the name of this thing? We were at Sima, and my son and me, we looked for a, for a place, and we sat on the floor, whatever. He, we had been there like for two hours. So, uh, oh. <laughs> As soon as you get married, your situation will change. Believe me, yeah. believe me. Hey, Danny, welcome yeah, to the patient. class. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Let's see who else is around. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Ada, hello, good evening. Hello, teacher. Good evening. How are you? How was your day? It's a relatively key day. Get up early, take a shower, prepare a breakfast for my family. I get up early to the hospital and visit the different service. Then they receive the topic for the resident, from the residents. And they prepare a presentation for the Congress, the new, the, the proximo mes, new, next month. And, and the I had in the in the in the afternoon I had uh I had the lunch and in the coffee and around the three and six p.m. and review the patients 
and the clinic. Patients. Patients and the clinic. Um, I get at home around the... Mm, 7 p.m. Okay. I, I take a shower. I took. I took a shower. I change my clothes and okay. prepare the, prepare the a little dinner and I ready for the class. <laughs> okay, excellent, excellent. Wow. It's a kid day. It's yeah, not quiet. And not uh, a little work. Uh, only, okay. the, only the two cirurgies for day around the. Okay. And the so area. in that case, in that case, you got to say it's a calm day or a slow day. A slow day, yes. Okay, well, interesting. Thank you very much, Ada, and welcome. Francisco, hello, how are you? Oh, sorry, Francisco, let me get the attendance first. Let's see. Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Present, teacher. Al Alejandro Alfredo Sagasco Medias. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher, Alejandro, present. Thank you. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present teacher. Eloisa Beatriz Mercado Mancía. Present. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Jairi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Iliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present. Irina Susana Cuellar Albanés. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. José Osmín Rivas Navas. Present. José Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present, teacher. Juan Carlos Romero López. Present. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present, teacher. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Sumaña Orellana. Roxana Iveta Asensio de Mejía. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Here, mister. Thank you. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Okay. Well, let's see, let's see, let's see. I still got time. So let's talk a little bit. I still got more people. Francisco, hello, good evening. How are you? Good evening, teacher. Just fine. And you, teacher? Ah, uh, you know, here is the same old story. So tell me, where are you now? <laughs> and, and, and today, uh, I am uh, in night shift. Uh, uh, oh, so you're getting ready. Yes, teacher. Um, but the, the company transportation uh, pick up for me uh, around uh, five to nine or, or at nine o'clock. Pick me up. Pick me up. Okay, thank you, teacher. The, today okay. is uh, for me. It's, uh, it was a, a relaxing day because 
uh, I come to home uh, around uh, 7 a.m. Uh, I have my breakfast and uh, after that uh, I go to sleep. I wake up, I remember the uh, 3, 3 p.m. And, and I feel that the the, the rest, uh, uh, how do you say it? Como fue suficiente, teacher, it's enough. It was enough. It was enough, right. Because uh, other times when I rest, I, uh, for example, for only three hours or four hours, uh, when I uh, come to the work, <laughs> I feeling uh, with a uh, consueño with uh, I feel sleepy. Sorry, teacher. I feel sleepy. I feel sleepy. Sleepy, sleepy. Let me take this for you. Okay, teacher. It is. Ah. Sleeping, right? But in, in this moment, I feel in, I feel in very good. <laughs> okay, that's nice. Excellent. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Perhaps you can participate a little bit on some of the activities. I know that you gotta go to work today. Okay, teacher. Thank you very much and welcome. Thank you, teacher. To you. So, Maria Alejandra, tell me, tell me, I didn't go to San Salvador today because I was worried. How <laughs> was traffic? No, teacher, I don't have a car uh, this week. I went to the uh, mechanic uh, for yeah. Yeah. Uh, Thursday, the last Thursday, because I have a one pilot or un piloto eh, oh, pilot. Turn yeah. on. and I don't feel bad the car but eh, I don't like use uh, the car when eh, yeah, yeah. Uh, if something uh -huh. is wrong uh -huh, because all the time it eh, dry alone or when move is very different the traffic and the areas are for the los alrededores, I can already do The nearby places. Uh, the nearby places, and I think that it's more dangerous or no, it's more, it's less safety compared to the others. And don't have a car, I stay in the house. <laughs> okay, I stayed at home. I just stay at home uh, only in the morning. I saw my father and went to the pizza hut for took my breakfast and then I stay in the company or in a office with my father and only that he returned that? Uh -huh. and I stay here and took a nap. Or, and only that. <laughs> okay, perfect, perfect, excellent. Thank mm -hmm. you very much for sharing with us and welcome. Thank you, teacher. Okay, let's see. Heidi, hello. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, how are you? I'm ready. Really? Cool. I like that. <laughs> Tell me, how was your day? What's new? Uh, it was a different day. The whole afternoon I was on uh, an assessment to hire 20 positions. Very interesting really? exercise. Mm -hmm. mm, nice. Hiring. Oh, mm -hmm. you know, Hiring is as complex and delicate as hiring people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, I know. I mean, 
it's a big compromise. Mm -hmm. It's a big compromise, and, and in the end, I mean, you are, you are, it's not that you feel, you are responsible of that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember hiring and evaluating people, complex. It's a complex position. Yeah, it is, certainly. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because uh, you got, uh, I mean, you evaluate the person, but you always need to look for something else, not just what is on the paper. I mean, you always get the, 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 all the paperwork with all the requirements and you talk to the person. And of course, all of us try to do our best at interviews but you have to look for those little quirks of the people that, uh, how do we say it? There are little tales. Mm -hmm. You get my meaning? When you say mm -hmm, there mm -hmm. are tales, things that let you know something else about the person. Yeah, I know, but I also think uh, more than an interview, uh, they have to do tests, psychological tests. Because there are some things that you cannot identify in an interview. Yeah, uh, 20, 25 minutes interview is not enough. Yeah, but you know, I got I got hired in a company. They made me go to, well, it, it was a political, that company. We had to go to three different psychologists. Mm -hmm. Really? And I got in, believe it or not. <laughs> Yeah, no, you won't believe it. I had to do, I had to go, let me see how many interviews. Uh, human resources, first one, then coordinator, then principal, mm -hmm. then ex back again with coordinator exams, then uh, computer exams, then three with the psychologist, then back again to the, with the principal and finally with human resources, just to get in. Wow. When I got into the bank, they even came to to my neighbor and asked neighbors if they knew me, oh, yeah. how I was. Yeah. Banks do they that. used to do that. They used to do that. Not anymore. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah, I remember my, my, my sister-in-law works for a bank. And yeah, they, they did that also in her case. Mm -hmm. And, you know, actually, actually, uh, for a moment, you feel kind of uh, uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But those are policies, you know? Yeah, that's right. And of course, I mean, uh, companies that work with, some, with something so delicate as money, they need to make certain the person who mm -hmm. they are hiding is is uh, going to it's not going to give them problems mm -hmm. it's the appropriate one mm -hmm. so it's a, it's a complex and delicate process exactly Heidi, always a pleasure talking to you thank you always very much always a pleasure for, being here. for me too teacher thank you okay let's see who else is around Still got a few minutes. <laughs> Steven, hello, Steven, how are you? Hi, mister, how you doing? How's everything? How's your job, man? Difficult, uh, right? Uh, sometimes, it is not all the time, to be honest, but today it was, uh, Maybe this continue, this actually continue, but it had been a good day. Okay, cool. And so you are in Guatemala right now, right? Yeah, that's right. Oh my gosh. And so what's your schedule or you don't have a, a set schedule for working? Yeah, pretty sure. Uh, because I had a lot of things at every single day to to do. 
So I need a schedule, uh, then a schedule for my life and a schedule for my job, to be honest. And uh, how can I say about my schedule? I, I wake up uh, maybe 5 a.m. So I, I had to do some issues before I began. Uh, I had to move. Uh, so I don't live in Guatemala. I live in San Salvador. I just work in Guatemala. So I had to, to, to stay. Or I don't have, can I say, live, but I stay, I, I sleep in a hotel. So I had to move to the hotel to my place work. Yeah. So my work project. place. Okay. Work. I have to commute. I have to commute. Commute. From the hotel. Yeah. That's the word to commute. Commute is something like a state, not live. There, no, no, no. Right? Commute is to travel from one place to the other one and back. Okay. 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 So you yeah. commute yeah. From, the, from the hotel to your workplace. Every single day. Yeah. Mm. But How long does it take you? No, it's closer. It's closer. Like um, I try to search some hotel that can be so closer to try to avoid uh, driving so 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 many uh, kilometers. I try to don't stay too much time in my car, so I lose time. Yeah, of course, yeah. of course, of course. Oh my gosh! And when when do you come back to El Salvador? Do you come like every fortnight, every month? Yeah, every month. Yeah, actually, tomorrow I will drive to to, to El Salvador, so I can Ouch. stay with family yeah, the weekend. How how long does it take you? Just the weekend. No, no, no. How long does it take you from Guatemala to to your house driving? It depends where I began with the travel. Yeah, because it, I work in a place that called Santa Cruz del Piche right now, because I, I, in, in that time, I work in that, in that place, in that project. So if I drive to Santa Cruz del Piche, to El Salvador, it's about maybe 12 hours. Yeah, so I try to move first to Guatemala City. Yeah. And if I start to Guatemala City, it's about four hours, kind of. Yeah, because Santa Cruz del Quiche, man, that's far. <laughs> yeah. It's, I had no how to say, I had no idea, not a clue. Uh, indigenous? Yeah, uh, uh, it's uh, aborigines. Population. Aborigines. Aborigines, yeah. It, it's, a, it's a population, or the people from there, it's aborigines. The yeah. people don't have control. <laughs> so I try to explain. The people don't have control. If you do something bad, the people is uh, the, I don't know. The judge, the, the jury. Yeah, exactly. It's the people who... Who do everything? Who take the law? Who take the rules and, and make it? Yeah, I know. I know what you mean. So let yeah. me see. Let me remember from Santa Cruz del Quiche. You pass by Pana. No, Pana is a little bit lower next Pana to the lake, Hedro. right? Yeah. Pana in order, Pana in Pana. order to get, in order to get to to Ciudad de Guatemala, you pass like a couple of hours close to Pana, right? No, no, no. It's about 30 minutes. Yeah, it's really oh, close. Really? Actually, the last weekend to try to uh, um, rest, I went to, to Panajachel. It's really close. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and, it's, it's pretty, and it's pretty beautiful. Yeah, it's but perfect. you have to go up first, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's sure. Yeah, I don't know, man, it's been a long while for me without passing by there. A really? long while. Yeah, I mean, when I was young, I used to go around a little bit. So I remember, I remember some places. And to be honest with you, some other places I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah, I used to go party and trip with some friends. Sorry, I can't hear you. 
Oh no, that I used to I used to go party and trip with some friends, but it was a long while. Actually, I remember. I guess I had a cousin in Panama. Oh really? I wish yeah. it could be really fun. Yeah, I remember having a cousin in Panama, but she got married like five years ago, but... and I I couldn't go. Oh okay. In a tent. but she lives there. Mm, cool, pretty cool, mister. The weather is nice, it's cold. Yeah, actually, yeah, it is. Uh, it depends where you are, but uh, it, it, it's pretty cool. I really enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, from Panama, you go up to the mountains, yeah, man, it's cold. I, I kind of, sorry? From Panama, you go up to the mountains and it's cold. Panama? It's cold, yeah, from there you go up. No, oh, you can still you can actually, you can still go actually, up. Yeah, but actually, uh, chill, not not really, but close. No, 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 no. That's why I mean, from Pana, you go up to the mountains like uh, four or five hours from Pana, you go up to the mountains and it's you go to some cold places. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like uh, where I don't know if you know yeah, that. Yeah, place. yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Where where? It's yeah, a, yeah, I know it. It's a really wonderful. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, but it's cool. Too much mountain lakes, and it's it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Uh, in short um, clothes, uh, in short words, sorry, uh, I enjoy my my work. It's really That's hard. Cool. I I I got the opportunity to to know some different place yeah that's awesome that's awesome well my friend welcome nice having you here thank you mister uh yes tell thing. me yeah i actually drive into my to my hotel and i just stopped let me the... let me know I... let me know as soon as you get there sorry let me know when you get there so you can participate more in the class, okay? Yeah, actually, I just stopped in the, the gas station to participate right now, <laughs> but I had okay, to- Okay, no, don't, don't worry, don't worry. That's fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, guys. Well, welcome all of you guys. I'm sorry if I couldn't talk to you. I'm sorry, I got excited sometimes talking with some of you. That's always takes me long. Let's see, activities for today. Well, Juan Carlos is exposing today, but not right now. Relax, Juan Carlos. Yeah? Yeah, Juan Carlos. Uh, we, got us, we got a couple of things to do. We got to work in the manual. There's a grammar point, quite easy. It's okay. You don't need a big explanation. We're going to work in the manual, in the ESA for manual. Pages number 13 and 14. And Right now, the, the, my lesson plan asked me to get you in groups. We, we are going to work a lot with the manual tonight. So first off, I will get you in groups. And there's the question for you. How would you define liturgy? Uh, discuss this quote with your partners. Leadership is much less about what you do and much more about who you are. Okay, you're going to tell me, what do you think about that? You're going to have five minutes to work in groups, in small groups, so you can discuss it and let's see, share opinions, okay? I will be jumping from group to group and let's do it, guys. Please jump into the groups right now. Groups are open. And if you need any help, just give me a holder. I'll be there.
Anna Claudia, you go to group number two. Hi, teacher. Sorry, I'm late, but the well, the question, the activity is to answer and discuss the question that I just sent into the group, into the okay. WhatsApp group. Okay. Ah, okay. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Right. What happened? Um, <laughs> uh, like something you do to influence and inspire uh, to others. They will go to like uh, how to say uh, or you or by the hall. Hall. Bump. But sorry. Hunt. Hunt. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I think that is really important leadership. So in order that they can let the the person can guide people. So through the perfect way. So what about you, Maria Alejandra? Um, I think that the same. I think that the, it's very important when the your boss or like this put in your shoes and try to understand all the situation for your past or a uh, different um, problems to do and try to give a different solution with different areas and know the people or persons uh, have these opportunity and only try to search uh, a culpable or like this. Uh, and I think that is very important for the team groups and when you work and all the All the people try to help or, uh, other people to need more, um, more, more help in different situations, and and I think that these they uh, these have the difference when you work with a. Uh, these persons than others because you don't stay you don't stay alone and you build the 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 help for or apoy you support uh -huh. you feel the support and you try to to do the better your work. Okay. Okay. That's good. Yes, I, I agree with. Okay. Hello, teacher. Hello, guys. Hi, teacher. Oh, we are discussing yes, about the Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, we were discussing about the statement and we are not agree with that quote you... We don't that, agree. Yes. With that. Or you can say we don't agree or you can say we disagree. We disagree with, with that statement, right? Mm -hmm. You disagree with the statement? Mm. Actually, actually, I guess we partially agree. Partially. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Because we think it's a combination of both. What you do 
has to be in order to who you are or the other way around. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah I catch the idea of the quote, but, uh, but in real practice, I mean, uh, yes, it is about who you are. But of course, if you are a good leader, you are going to do a lot that is going to be good for the people you are working with. Mm -hmm. So, as you said, it's, it's a combination. I, I mean, mm -hmm. the thing is this, that what you do is the result of who you are. Should mm -hmm. be, must be. Yes, it must be, but not always is in that way. I mean, uh, because you can compare a good person uh, who is full, como se dice, integral. Complete, integral, yeah, but you know, the mm -hmm. problem is this, sometimes to be, well, and and perhaps uh, Heidi got a, a, an opinion about this, sometimes to be a good leader, and you have to be a little bit less of a good person. What mm -hmm. you need to be is objective. Yes. I mean, yeah, sure. because sometimes to be a to be a good leader and requires from you to let go some people that is not going to be good for the rest of the team. And it's not that we are simply talking about the, the rotten apple. There's people who are pretty good in some areas, but perhaps not in the areas you will need them to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some people are so good at those, they got so many good abilities that they don't want to learn some other abilities or skills that are necessary for the job they are required to do. So in those situations, I mean, a good person would say like, no, let's give him more opportunities. A good leader must say, I need somebody else. It's not productive. It's not good for the team. It's not good for the company. So it's it's a, it's pretty complex. It's pretty. It's that we were seeing it from another point of view. For example, oh. mm -hmm. I, I asked my team to be on time every day, every day. Be on time, guys. Be on time. Be on time. But how about asking them to be on time and me getting late? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Then yeah, I'm, you, I'm, mm, you have to to be what you live. Yeah, and I mean, there's people who really got bad, bad circumstances, uh, but sometimes the company demands of you to apply the rules. And, mm -hmm. And that's difficult, believe me. Uh, well, Heidi's been in that situation. I remember being in charge of what, around 25, 25 uh, persons. My team was pretty, was a little bit big. And my problem was that those people worked with me just uh, part-time, just per hours. And believe me, and I and they didn't have the same schedule. I mean, some people was working with me on weekdays, afternoon. Some people were working with me Saturdays morning. Some people were working with me Saturday afternoon. And it's so terrible. And I mean, and you can be a nice person and support it, but it's so terrible when two or three persons let you know that they are not going to, to their workplaces at the same time, the same day, like 10 minutes before classes mm -hmm. started. Man, I could do something with one. I mean, I could cover, but two, that was crazy. Mm -hmm. like, they did it to me more than twice, three times on a, on a module. I had to let go. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah. it's even worse when they, are, when they were your friends. Mm -hmm. And even worse when you were the one who recommended them and hired them. Oh my so, goodness. but you have to, you have to. So as I tell you, Carlos, uh, uh, it's not just to be, not, it's not as simple as saying uh, he's a good person, he's a very integral person. Something is more about being objective because oh. 
Mm -hmm. Being a good person sometimes is a little bit subjective because you get into mm -hmm. feelings, into being uh, empathic with people. But in big companies or depending on the situations or what the company is about, sometimes it doesn't work. Yes. Then that's something Maybe. else. That's something else. The area. The area in which you work demands different aspects. So, yes, yeah, you said we can agree a little bit with the quote, but not completely. Mm -hmm. It's like I, I'm. I'm not. I don't know why. Always there is an, a comparison between leadership and this other. Uh, what's the correct term to um, leader? E and boss. And boss, right? I, I don't know why this is. This has got. Oh, because it sounds good, but sometimes the a good leader needs to be a very strict boss, depending on the situation. Mm -hmm. Right, Heidi? I mean, there are situations when you where you can be lenient, but there are situations where you need to be strong and strict. Yeah. Yeah, sure. right. And, well, how long have you been in your position, Heidi? As branch manager for nine years. But before assistant branch manager, which is almost the same, eight years. Hey, it's time. Let's go. Okay. 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 I was talking to myself. Let's see. Everybody's back. Okay, guys. Now. Those questions were for us to discuss, and I heard different opinions. Some people say, yeah, we totally agree. Some say, eh, just a little bit. And it's a very interesting topic. Now, that was the introduction of what we are going to do, the first activity that we are going to do. We got us in page number 13, a passage that we are going to read, okay? And then we are going to answer a uh, a uh, very short exercise, pretty short, but I need us to get into the book. So let me share with you. Okay, let's see. Uh, Ileana, thank you, you are the volunteer. I need you to please read the paragraph, can you see it? Yep, sorry. Actually, okay. teacher, I was looking the paragraph on the manual, but um, is I can see nothing in my in my manual. And what but, about I'm sharing the screen? Can you see it now? Yeah. No. Yeah. Oops. Okay. I read the whole Please. paragraph. Yes. Do. Okay. Okay, John Davison Rockefeller was an American oil industry business magnate and magnate. philanthropist born in magnate. Okay, thank you. Magnate and philanthropist born in a uh, 39 Rockefeller 18. became an assistant 18, sorry, 1839. Rockefeller became an assistant bookkeeper at the age of 16. He worked long hours and delighted, as he later recalled, in, in all the methods and system of the office. Okay. Thank you, Liana. Just right there. Just right there. Just right there. Thank you. Okay. And let's see. Mm -hmm. uh, Heidi, continue, please. Making 50. Where do I start? Making, Making 50, 50 cents. Yeah. Okay. Let me make it bigger. Making 50 cents a day 
The full salary for his first three months work was $50. In his youth, Rockefeller reportedly said that he that his two great ambitions were to make 100,000 equivalent to $3 million in 2016 and to live 100 years. Okay, For... thank you. Thank you, sorry to stop you. Okay. Uh, Ana Claudia, please finish. Okay. Maurice B. Clark was the first man who Rockefeller partnered with uh, for a business opportunity when he was 20. Refining was the business that he focused on instead of oil drilling. Rockefeller formally founded the Standard Oil Company Inc. in 1870. Henry Flagger and Samuel Andrew are some of the people that Rockefeller partnered with uh, to run the Standard Oil Company Inc. until 1897. He became the richest person in the U.S. Okay, Anna Claudia, thank you very much. Just remember, uh, refining was the business that he focused on. He what? That he focused focus, on? No, focus, uh, focus, 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 focused, not okay. a T. No. D. Please, yeah, focus. Focused on. Okay, uh, excellent. Thank you. Thanks to you guys. Okay, let's see. It's Mr. Rockefeller. So he says that he was an oil industry business magnate and philanthropist. Okay, that's very interesting. And instead of being instead of being uh, working on oil drilling, he was working on refining. Okay. Look at the passage above and again and complete the sentences. Okay, we're gonna do it like this. Rockefeller reportedly said, okay, let's see, let's see. Which is the word that is missing here, guys? Can you see it? That. That. Okay, perfect. Let's see. Excellent. He said that. Now, the next one. Maurice B. Clark was the first man. Who? Excellent. Who Rockefeller partnered with? Refining was the business? That. That. Yeah. Excellent, guys. That. He focused on instead of oil drilling. Okay, now this is very interesting. That, who, that. It makes sense, right? Rockefeller reportedly said that his two great ambitions were Okay, and that's our grammar topic for tonight. Don't worry, we are going to go slow with it. It's very simple. But before that, I need to get the attendance, guys. So let me get the attendance. Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Alejandro Alfredo Sagasto Medias. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present teacher. Eloisa Beatriz Mercado Mancía. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present. Irina Susana Cuella Lovanes. Present. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. 
José Osmín Rivas Navas. Present. José Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present, teacher. Juan Carlos Romero López. Present. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Present. Roberto Luis Sumaña Orellana. Roxana Iveda Asensio de Mejía. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. En Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Ok, guys. Well, our topic for tonight. Hmm. What we are talking about is something that is called relative clauses. Okay, what is a relative clauses? Uh, very interesting, no? Okay. There are different types of relative clauses. Okay. They are used to um, they are used to join to English sentences or to give more information about something, okay? Like uh, you can say, it, you got two questions, two sentences, like, uh, Ileana bought a necklace. It is very expensive. Ileana bought a necklace that is very expensive. So, the relative close, that, okay? Uh, Steven works in Guatemala. He enjoys working in Guatemala. Steven works in Guatemala. Uh, wish he enjoys. In this case, wish lo cual. If you want me, I can uh, text the sentences so you can find it. So the first one I said, Stephen lives in Guatemala. He enjoys living there. Those are the two sentences. Now, when we make it into a relative clause, I said, I say, Stephen lives in Guatemala. Which he enjoys. Look at the sentence. I texted it in the some chat, okay? No. As I told you, there are different types of relative clauses. You have defining, not defining, okay. And what's that? Hmm, we have defining relative clause when the relative pronoun is the subject. And that's exactly what we are going to get into that because there's also when it is the object, but in the manual they have it the, in the most simple way. It's gonna be pretty simple. So we're gonna check it from there. Let me share with you again. If we go in the manual to page number 14, we got how to use defining relative clauses. As I told you, we needed to get into the defining one. When the relative pronoun is the object of the defining relative clause, it is usually omitted. What are we talking about? Look at this sentence. He's the lawyer that the manager met at the meeting. In this case, that is omitted. Why? Because he's the lawyer the manager met at the meeting. 
this expression is referring to the object of the defining relative clause. And what's that? Okay, to make it simple. He's the lawyer, which lawyer? Who? Oh, the one the manager met at the meeting. This is the object. Uh, for us to remember something, the object in a sentence is the one who receives the action. Let's make it simpler because I know that it sounds kind of weird like that. Okay, let me see, let me see. Bear with me for a second because I want this to be clear because when we start getting into the grammar terms, sometimes they become like complex or confusing, okay? In a sentence, we have, you know, that we have this subject, right? On a basic structure, in a very simple sentence, we have subject plus the verb plus the complement. In this case, we are talking about the basic structure or a very simple sentence, okay? Subject plus verb plus complement. Okay, now, we know that we have the one who makes the action. Okay. The one who makes the action. Then we have the action. I'm sorry, guys, I need to do a little something here. There we go. Then we have the action. And then we have, usually we call it the complement. But in this case, we have the one who or what receives the action, okay? What are we talking about? Okay, the subject, the one who makes the action. The verb is the action. The complement is who or what receives the action. Okay, what is the teacher talking about? Look at this sentence. Uh, one of the examples I gave you. Eliana, is that an I or an E? An E, right? Eliana, both an echoes. Okay, now, this is who makes or performs the action. This is the action. This is who or what receives the action. Okay. This is also called the object of the sentence. Okay. This is also called the object of the sentence. Now, when we talk about the object, it can be a direct object or indirect object, but that's something that we, that you, you saw already when you were working with the passive voice, right? This is just a little review for you to remember. Let me get you a, a I'll get you a screenshot of this so you can have it. Any question up to here? Can you recognize what is the subject, the object of the sentence? Yes. Yes, clear. Yeah. It's clear. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to go so slow, but I want it to be clear. And I know that grammar like this sometimes gets kind of tricky for some of you. I know that for some of you, you are going to tell me not, teacher, that it's okay. But uh, bear with me. Be a little bit patient. Oh, my goodness. 
second, I'm trying to make this smaller. There we go. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just trying to get you the, the, the image in the, the WhatsApp group so you can you can have it there and you can check it anytime you want. There we go. Okay. You have it there. Now, as I was telling you, oh, we need to go back to the book. In this case, when the relative pronoun is the object, the one who receives the action, okay? Of the defining relative clause, it is usually a meet. So in this case, he is the lawyer that, the relative pronoun, it is omitted. Why? Because it's the object, the one who receives the action. Which was the action? This is the action, okay? The manager met him, okay? Met that person, okay? They are some of the people that Rockefeller partner with. The verb in this case is this, the action. The action was received by those people. So in this case, we erase it. Now, when the relative pronoun is the subject of the clause, it cannot be omitted. Look at this. He is the lawyer who. In this case, if you notice, who is related to he. He is the lawyer who signed the contract. We cannot say he is the lawyer signed the contract. Doesn't make sense. So in this case, it cannot be omitted. You can usually tell when a relative pronoun is the object of the clause because it is followed by another subject, okay? Ah, this is very interesting. He's the lawyer that, the manager. The lawyer, one subject. The manager, another subject. We don't need it, okay? Look, the lawyer that I, we have one person here. We have another person here. The lawyer that I hired did not do a good job. So in this case, we can say, the lawyer I hired did not do a good job. Is it being understood? The student, uh, that Heidi worked with was, hmm, I don't remember. Who was the student that you worked with, Heidi? In this case, if you notice in the question when I said, who was the student that you, so I have, the same situation. I have one subject who was the student, one subject, that you, another subject, work with. So Eliana, tell me, who was the guy that I, who was the guy who I saw you with the other day? She goes like, hmm, oh, my friend, she says, my coworker, you see? Who was the guy who I saw you with? I can say, who, what, who was the guy I saw you with? There's no need for the who. And it, it sounds better and it's okay. You can use both, yes, you can use both ways. You can use it with the that, who, which, or you can omit it. Now, you will sound better if you 
omitted when it is not necessary. It's just a little bit redundant. Doesn't sound bad, it's okay. A lot of people speak like that. So it's not like a big deal if you omit it or not, but grammatically, you have the option to get it off or not. That is a relative pronoun which can be used with people or things. The lawyer that I hired did not do a good job. Please make a copy of the contract that I signed yesterday. Now, just remember that instead of that, when you're talking about people, you can use who, okay? And remember that who is used for the one who performs the action. Okay, now, the exercise. You have to complete the sentences using the relative pronouns who or that and use a hyphen, this is a hyphen, when the pronoun can be omitted. Compare your answers with a partner. What are we going to do? Better yet, we are going to work it in groups. So let me get it like this so I can give you a screenshot so you can work better. You're going to have five minutes. This is a very simple exercise. Now, guys, I need you to be honest. If you understand it, let me know. If you don't, let me know so I can give you more info, okay? So the groups are open. Please jump in. Now, guys, tell me, how's the, 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 the subject? Is it clear? The topic, I'm sorry. Mm, yes. In my case, I guess I, I understand this topic. Uh, I was reading the, the manual that where there is an, an brief explanation to. And yes, I could tell you that uh, I'm good with that. Okay, perfect. Heidi? It's a bit confusing, but <laughs> yeah, it's like a, a, a minor uh, grammatical error, right? <laughs> when speaking, sorry, grammatical. Yeah, 
Yeah, I got you, I got you. What about you, Heidi? Is it clear for you or you're gonna tell me? Teacher, please explain. Hi there. Hello. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I do. Now I do. Oh, okay. It's that I don't know what I did to this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Some, Sometimes they get uncomfortable, right? <laughs> it's so that I me. was. Did you get I think the, the it's, subject? Is it clear? Yeah, teacher. It, uh, for me, I think it's clear. Yeah, it's just that, uh, you know, when people get too quiet, I get worried. <laughs> it's like when your kids don't make any noise, you get like, uh -huh. oh my God, something's going on. Thinking? Yeah, I know. Let me just hop into another group to check out and then we go back. Okay. Okay. Okay, teacher. In the manual, especially... the number three. Guys, I'm sorry to interrupt. Different. Hello. Sorry Hello. to interrupt. Is it clear? I'm worried. <laughs> yeah. Yes, for I was just confused at the very beginning, but then I read again. Uh, I didn't read slowly, but now I understand when it says you can usually tell when a relative pronoun is the object of the class because it's followed by another subject class verb. That part was confusing me, but now I got it. That is talking that we can identify when a relative pronoun is the object of the class. And in that case, we can omit it or we can use it, right? Yeah, as I told you, uh... Which example do I use? Oh, Ileana, the, the guy that I saw Ileana with was her friend. Mm -hmm. You see? The guy that I, another subject. Mm -hmm. So I can say the guy I saw Ileana with is her friend. You see? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, see. they were holding hands and hugging and you know, but <laughs> she says it's a friend, so yeah. no comments, no comments. <laughs> That's my dreams, teacher. My dreams. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Oh no comments. <laughs> okay, so we cool. We understand it. Yep. Yes, yeah, because sure. people were too quiet, and you know, I get worried when people get too quiet. Whenever it's grammar. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, but now it's clear for me. Okay, perfect. Let me go check the rest of the groups. Thank you, teacher. Okay, thank you, teacher. Okay, the one in the manual, so we number. I don't know. Okay, guys, questions, questions, questions. Tell me, tell me, tell me. So I have this, this question, T-shirt. So when we are like talking about people, so we can use which and that, right? So like the last no, one. You can, you can use who or that. Who oh, that? Ah, oh, okay. yeah. Like, like the girl who you were kissing is your girlfriend, right? The mm. girl who you were kissing is your girlfriend. If you see who, mm -hmm. I can yeah. use who or that. The girl that I saw you. You see, I can use who or that for people, mm -hmm. but for anything else that okay or wish in certain situations but that's another topic don't get into it yet okay okay mm -hmm. you'll get more confused yeah okay. now so yeah i clarified that yeah because i was thinking that uh that in which so you okay. so specify people yeah but if you said that so now is better so I, yeah. I can say that it's better mm -hmm. 
Now, something that you must be aware of, of is this. Uh, sometimes we, you can notice that a person is a Latin speaker originally, a Spanish speaker originally, because they use a lot the that. You can notice, I said at the beginning, you can notice that a person, you can notice a person is Spanish speaking originally, because in Spanish we use a lot that expression. In español utilizamos mucho la palabra que. Mm, well, yes. él, es, él es la persona de la que te estoy hablando. Él es la persona quien va a venir a trabajar. You see, we use it a lot in Spanish, but in English, it's not always necessary. So, it will take a little bit of time for you to get used to it because, as I tell you, in Spanish, we use it a lot, okay? Like, eh, you know, Maria Alejandra is the person Fernando told me he didn't want to work with. Because she's so problematic. Maria Alejandra is the person that Fernando told me. You see, in Spanish we say, Maria Alejandra is not chica, o la persona que Fernando me dijo, o quien, de quien Fernando me dijo que no quería trabajar. But in English, you say, Maria Alejandra was the person Fernando told me. You don't need to use that or who. It's not necessary. Mm -hmm. It's okay. just that for us, it's a little bit complex because for us in Spanish, it makes sense if you use it. Yeah, we all use it. Means, it, makes, it makes completely sense because we all use it a lot. Of, a lot. But in English, it is not necessary. Got it? Got it, teacher. Yes, teacher, got it. Okay. And don't, don't believe it, Maria Alejandra. Fernando told me that he wants to work with you. He's, <laughs> of, he's of me, the one who told me he doesn't want to work with you. Yes, I do. <laughs> Irene. Hello, Irene. There comes everybody. Uh, oh, Heidi, before I forget, at the end, I need you to say just for a second. I have something that I need to give you, okay? Okay, teacher. So just for a couple of minutes at the end. Okay. Okay, let's see. Well, now, the exercise is very simple. You can use that in all of them, or you can not use them if you don't want because listen to the sentences. The specialists you recommended were excellent. It's okay, right? And you can say the specialist that you recommend, and it's okay. Something that I was explaining to some of your classmates is this. For us, Spanish speakers, it's a little bit difficult to, to get rid of that expression of the that because we in Spanish, it's natural for us to use it. And it makes completely sense. Okay? Like I'm talking to, I'm talking to Fernando and I tell him, hey Fernando, este, Maria Alejandra es la compañera, es la alumna que le dije que habla mucho en clase. Es la alumna que, in Spanish we use it. It's natural. It's appropriate. Fernando, look, uh, Maria Alejandra is the student I told you talks a lot in class. In English, it is not necessary. So the little problem for us is this, that 
we use it a lot. Did you notice? The little problem is we use it a lot. You see, and the first time I use it. The problem is that we use it a lot. You know that if we have that and after it comes another subject, we, you can get rid of that. The problem is we use it a lot. In English, that sounds better. What happened here? In English, that sounds better, no subject. You see? Needs to be there. So if you have a subject after it, get rid of it. Don't use it. It takes a little bit of time, a little bit of practice. Remember, uh, something that affects is that for us in our native language, we need it. We need that particle for the sentence to make sense most of the time. But in English, it does. So slowly you will be getting it. Uh, some exercises that I will share with you are going to help you a lot. And let me see. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna share something with you here. Let me just do something. Okay, but now the time has come for uh, 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 Juan Carlos. I know you were excited. It's your moment, my friend. Oh, really? Oh. Okay. What you got for us? Uh, may I share the, the document on the group? On the, on the group to... Uh, yeah, sure. To help me to share the screen? Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, as a spoiler, this is this exposition is about nouns, and then I'm gonna be brief on this topic. Uh, I'm certainly sure that all of you are already have already reviewed this information before or studied this, but uh, I wanted to make an like, um, how do you say, repas? Review. Oh, oh okay. A veces me gusta usar para different story. Okay, uh, the review of this topic. Okay, give me just a second then. Let's see. Thank you. There you go. Okay, nouns. Then, uh, as I told you, nouns is something important when speaking English. This is because sometimes we want to uh, like uh, say a word, but without committing the error of mention and verb on adjective instead. So this is a, the first uh, slide is going to show us how to identify a noun. And uh, remember, The one next? Oh no, it's okay there. Well, to identify a noun, we can uh, use the um, suffix. Suffix, thank you. The suffix like age to, for example, language, uh, ends, importance, hood, childhood, childhood, um, ism, Nationalism, East, Artist, Idud, Multitude, Ment, Government, Ness, Happiness, 
Chip Championship and Sean and with T on S or S station. And for the for the end of this uh, topic, we I would like to all of you participate to provide at least one example on this uh, slide. Okay, we can oh, go okay. the next. Okay, uh, can we make nouns from other words? Yes, it is possible to create words from verbs on or adjectives. Find below some samples. Adapt as a verb. Uh, it has this form as a subject. In this case, a uh, adapt adaptation. Conclude conclusion. Confuse confusion. Demonstrate demonstration. So uh, the the thing or that I wanted to show you is that uh, don't get confused when you are trying to say or or speak about a noun by pronouncing a verb uh, because this is so important when we are with with the thing that you are going to try or explain to your uh, your friend or whatever you be speaking with and also this uh, this I, I set two samples with how it works with verbs on adjectives angry anger careless carelessness difficult difficulty so uh, you can take those examples and make a uh, review later if you want to uh, increase your uh, vocabulary. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that was all. <laughs> I wanted to be brief, to be honest. Like, oh, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. And it's a nice topic, actually. And yeah, you can do that. You can also do make a verb into a uh, into a noun if you make if you are er on the verb and in that specific case you're referring also to the person who performs the action like work worker play player right hmm. very good topic interesting thank you very much Juan Carlos and I have some observations but I'll send them directly to you little things don't worry and now let's see for Friday, for tomorrow is Marcos. Okie dokie. So Marcos is not here. If he's not here, and if tomorrow, if one day one of you doesn't come, no worry. I have some topics prepared and I will expose one topic for you. Okay? So don't be worried about that. We are going to do the exercise. Now, guys, let's see. We need to talk. Today we haven't had that big conversations. Now, let's see. Let me get the... the, the... Okay, the topic we are going to work with today. Questions. Okay, neighbors. We're going to talk about neighbors. Sometimes we have some nagging neighbors, right? Sometimes we have neighbors who are always complaining about something. They are nagging. Sometimes we are the nagging neighbors. That happens, right? Okay. So let's start. Tell me. Let's see. Let's see. Now, I want to volunteer for this question. Hello? Anybody? You better make the question first and then we volunteer. <laughs> okay, thank you, Heidi. You are the volunteer. Thank you. <laughs> you just volunteer. Tell me, what are the most common neighbor complaints? Uh, noise. Noises. Noise. Parking problems. Okay, so those are the most common noise, parking problems. Okay, now, thank you, Heidi. Danny, tell me. 
Do you get on well with your neighbors? Um, yeah. Yeah, um, I'm a good neighbor. <laughs> okay, that's nice. Yes. I think another another problem in the neighborhood is the is the dogs. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, the pets always have problem with animals. Thank you, Danny. Ileana, tell me, what type of neighbor are you? What kind of neighbor are you? Are you loud? Are you dirty? Nagging? Or are you understanding? Mm, understanding, I think. Okay, you think? You know, I don't, Give me an example. I don't speak too much with my neighbors, actually. Well, my neighbor that is next to my house, like, I don't know, like, mm, left to my house. Okay. She's very, uh, you know, she's very, nagging is like. Complaining. Okay. She's annoying. <laughs> okay, okay. Perfect, yeah. thank you. Okay, no. Now, I got one for, let's see, Anna Claudia. Hello. Hi, teacher. How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> you got me to answer the singing too? I'm fine. <laughs> okay, I got a question for you. No, it's just because I know that you love new words. Oh, my God. Look what? at this question. What is that neighbors do that peeves you the most? Peeves, my God, it's the first time I see that word. What's the meaning? Okay. Uh, like get me angry? Yes, exactly ah, that. Okay. That pisses you off, okay? That's, that's the meaning. It's just that it's a very formal and, ah. and British word. Peeps. Ah, peeps to the mouth. Well, you know, the one that was living beside my home, oh my God, she was, everything that ha happened at her house, it was the neighbor's fault. If, for example, the roof uh, was damaged, it's because we made something. We threw up a, how uh, do you say, it's a piedra. Stone. A stone because the other one made some, always everybody has, because always she was looking someone to pay for their things at home. But you know, uh, last year, yes, it was last year, she was, I don't know how she did it, but she was, every day she was on the roof, using high heels and uh, ay, se me olvidó el verbo, barriendo, but. Passing the broom? Yeah, using high heels. And one day she fell, fell down, is correct to say fell down? Yeah, mm -hmm. well, yeah. fell down or fell off? Se cayó. From where? From the roof. Fell off. Yeah, and that was the only way she could understand that she is not able to do those things. She's alive, she's alive, but it was uh, a big, ay, big susto. <laughs> scare. Scare. It was a big scare. It was a big scare. And so at the end, uh, that solved the issue we had with that neighbor because she, no longer she lives here, she wants to live with one of her daughters. Okay, yeah, some people are complex. Now, <laughs> change of topic. Thank you very much, Anna Claudia. Okay. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Now we are going to talk about memory, okay? Let's see, Fernando, tell me, do you usually remember things or forget things? Um, I usually remember. So you got a good memory. 
and yes but with the ashes is difficult <laughs> every every year is, is more difficult but I usually i have good memory man don't scare me i'm older than you please come on <laughs> now teacher but i i think that uh i noticed because you know i i love read but sometimes i i i watching uh, articles about a book but i i read the book already and i don't remember because i don't know oh, that, yeah that happens that happens or, i mean or, when... I, or i missed the, the the stories yeah know? but let's say that is because you have a lot in your mind okay it's not <laughs> yeah. that you forget it's just that <laughs> there's so much there that you cannot find it come on man don't a lot of that. information yeah but, yeah yeah uh, please you, so... you're killing me here fernando <laughs> Uh, some, some years ago, I, 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 I used to, uh, me, me I, used to I got used to, uh, I got used to, uh, to take notes in an app because, uh, you know, I had, you, you're right, I had a lot of information, not only my, from my home and my work, I, I, I work with a lot of information, so it's complicated yeah, you, know, you know a friend of mine actually he's an old man now a friend of mine told me when i was like 18 19 he showed me a, a little paper because i was asking if he remembered something we were working together and he told me look this is paper it was created so you can write down all those things that you don't need to be remembering all the time so right. use it and i was like okay cool so I take notes and it works for me. I mean, you know, I didn't used to like post-its and now that I am teaching like uh, online, they come handy. They help me a lot. Oh, like I, okay. I got one right here where I got all the people that are assigned for the, for the speaking practice. And I mean, so if you can write it down, it's cool. Thank you, Fernando. Thank you, teacher. Okay, let's see. Uh, 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 um. Jose Wilfredo. No here, no around. Let's see. Ramon. Hello, Ramon. How are you? Hello. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Okay, Ramon, you're a guy, so I gotta. This is a safe question for you. How old are you? How old are you? I am? Uh, I um, let me see, thirty years old. Okay. Now, what's your earliest memory? Yeah, um, uh, la más reciente. No, the earliest. El primer recuerdo uh, que tiene. From uh, you were a little kid. Okay, okay. Uh, in sure. the uh, kinder, I think. <laughs> okay, preschool. That's preschool. Well, sorry. Preschool. Yes. Yes. Okay. Right Thank you. Jose Wilfredo, you back. Yes, teacher, I'm here. Okay, question for you. What's your earliest memory? My earliest? Yep, your earliest memory. Mm, I don't know, maybe the last weekend. No, no, no. The earliest memory is the the first memory you got from when you were a little kid. To be honest, I don't remember. I have a lot of memories when I was a kid. Well, okay. then is that I collect uh, ant and I make the those fire 
Okay. Thank you. Now, guys, uh, I'm sorry. I will, I will post something here in the Zoom chat, and I will also post it in the WhatsApp group because your homework is to answer this. The situation is many people find that a certain sound or smell brings back a childhood memory very strongly, such as the smell of a food that your mother often cooked when you were young. Why do you think this is? What has this effect on you? Give examples. I need you to look at the situation. Here you have the situation. Many people find that a certain sound or smell brings back a childhood memory very strongly. An example is uh, the smell of a food that your mother often cooked when you were young. Question for you. Why do you think this happens? And what has this effect on you? That's your homework. I need you to answer those questions and send me the text, okay? Please do it. I am checking that information. Actually, I got a lot of that because I got a backlog. A couple of you, that's why I haven't given them back, but I'm checking, okay? So do it, guys. That's that's helping us to improve on writing, okay? Uh, with some of you last module, I guess, we were making small paragraph, right? And I need us to work in this module, creating a little essay. We are going to make a report, an essay, and it's gonna be fun, okay? No worry, we will go step by step. Teacher, yes. Where where are we uh, uploading the our homework? In the WhatsApp group. You just take a picture. If you do it by hand, take a picture, and that's it. Okay. If you make it on on a text on a uh, on a Word document, you send it there. Yes, Stephen, oh. tell me. Okay. Yeah, Mister, I had a question. Sorry, I already had connected again. And can you repeat it about the homework, please? I didn't listen I just, to you. I just post something in the WhatsApp group. You got it? Are you in the uh, WhatsApp group? Yes, right? Let me see. Yeah, yeah. I think okay. it is. I just post something there. Many people find that a certain sound or smell brings back childhood memory very strongly, such as the smell but, of but the food that your mom... about the last question? Okay, you need to answer the last two questions. Why do you think this is... Yeah. What has this effect on you? Give me a couple of examples or one example. Explain. That's what I want you to just, explain. Just, just texting mm -hmm. on WhatsApp. You can you can do you it if you phone? want. Oh, if you okay. want to do it handwritten, take a picture. If you want to do it on a text, if you got a big example, do it in a document and send the document. Okay. Okay. Whichever works, whichever works for you. Okay, thank you. Perfect. Any question? No, Guys, sure. any other question? Is the homework clear? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. please yeah. do it, do it. It's helping me help you, okay? So I can okay. check out where, which areas I can help you with. Now, let me get the final attendance, guys. Ada Susana Caceres Mendoza. Present, teacher. Alejandro Alfredo Sagastume Diaz. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present teacher. Eloisa Beatriz Mercado Mancía. Present. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present teacher. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Jairi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Elena Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present. Irene Susana Cuellar Albanés. Present. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Jose Osmín Rivas Navas. Present. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Juan Carlos Romero López. Present teacher. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. 
Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Present teacher. Roberto Luis Sumaña Orellana. Roxana Iveda Asensio de Mejía. Estoy ocupado. Thank you, Roxana. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Here, yeah, mister. Thank you. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Okay, guys. Wow. Sorry for the time. I know that I passed a couple of minutes. It was just that it was a very nice and interesting class. Thank you very much for being here. See you tomorrow. Be on time, please. Bye bye. Thank bye. you. Bye. Good night. Good night, teacher. Have a good night, guys. Mm -hmm. Yes, you needed to send it to me so I could check it out. I'm sorry, teacher. I hadn't understand it that way. But I did yeah. it. I promise. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you did it. I will ask you to, to rewrite it because I need punctuation. I'm sorry? I need, I need to check your punctuation. Okay. So I will ask you to rewrite it so you can send it back to me. Because, I mean, it's clear, I, I can understand you, but uh, I want to check out how you're working with punctuation, okay? Okay, teacher. Okay, give me just a second that these people can. I don't like it when people do this. We have a, a group that is from, from the teachers from here, but sometimes people start sending nonsense and that pisses me off mm -hmm. yeah i mean because i'm working with you and if i see that it's a uh, the, the official mean that we have to communicate mm -hmm. i mean uh, i go and check perhaps mm -hmm. something important i don't like they make me waste time okay let's mm -hmm. see very simple very simple what i got for you what I got to share with you. And uh, with vocabulary, I don't have a problem with you, Heidi. And actually, you are at the point that I would like you to start working more specifically with this. Please. Uh, if it's possible for you to open it. Yeah, grammar explanations. Yep. Census forms. But I don't want you to go to the, the first one is how to make the verb tense, how to use the verb tenses. I need you to go back. Okay. Where it says more verb explanations. There's stative verbs, uh, transitive and intransitive reporting verbs, okay? Mm -hmm. I need you to focus on all those topics, gerunds, okay? Mm -hmm. Because if you go down even more, you can find a lot else, mm -hmm. right? Right. But, but mostly what I want you to start working with is this, when it says more verb explanations. Why? And I explained you this. You got a good level of vocabulary, vocabulary, and you got a very good pronunciation. And your level of spoken English is quite good. I guess you have practice and you keep on practicing, right? Yeah, right. It's my kids and speak English almost all the time. Okay, so. In your case, uh, I have the, the, the opportunity to help you become a little bit closer to word perfect. I mean, at this age and with all due respect, at our age to, to work on the accent is quite difficult. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are Latin speakers and it mm -hmm. shows, but it doesn't mean that we cannot improve the level of our English. And the level of a good English is not just the pronunciation. 
I mean, there's people who has grown there, but they ain't got no good education. Mm -hmm. They speak like I just did. They ain't got no. That's mm -hmm. correct. They don't have a good academic education, so they don't have a good level of English. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the same happens with us here. I mean, there's people who speak perfectly, that communicate perfectly in Spanish, which doesn't mean that they speak perfectly Spanish. And that's okay. most of us. Mm -hmm. So what I want you is to start working on those specific topics because when we reach a certain level of knowing uh, the language or speaking the language is when grammar becomes more important because it will open the language a little bit more for you. It will give you more tools or better tools to express yourself. Because as I tell you, you are in the level that you don't need to learn how to communicate, Heidi. You communicate perfectly in English. I want you to communicate better. Okay. To be more specific. And those little things that you got there are going to help you. Okay? So, okay. I know you, that you're a pretty busy person, but whenever you get the chance, I mean, dedicate five, 10 minutes, just out of curiosity, mm -hmm. start looking at them. After each explanation, you get little exercises, mm -hmm. check them out, and it's going to help you. It's not easy grammar, it's advanced mm -hmm. grammar, mm -hmm. but uh, if I'm giving it to you right now, it's because I feel you are able to work with it, okay? Okay, teacher, I really appreciate and, it, and I will, I no, promise. And even if you sometimes feel it a little bit strong, remember this. Uh, again, with all due respect, as I am sure your experience in your position has let you know a lot of things for certain in your area. I've been at this 20 years. If I tell you, you are up to it, you are up to it, okay? Okay. I mean, uh, I got enough experience to us to tell that you are ready for this type of grammar. At the beginning, perhaps you will feel a little bit confusing, not that difficult, but a little bit confusing, but you'll get it, okay? And if you got any question, screenshot, send it to me, help you out, okay? Okay, teacher. Thank you. I really appreciate uh, it. Thanks to you, Heidi. Always a pleasure talking to you. Have a good night. Take care. Good night, teacher. Thank you again. Bye. Bye. What a nice class.